Did you know you could refrigerate beer in a cave? That's how they did it here for quite some time. Founded in 1829, D.G. Yungling & Son is America's oldest brewery. They paved the way for today's breweries and they've lasted through everything. Civil War, World War I, Prohibition, World War II. Still going strong. Let's go inside and see some real American history. My name is Wendy Yingling Baker. I work in administration for the brewery. My dad runs the company now in his fifth generation. John Callahan, I'm from right here in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. I'm the lead brewer now over at our new facility in Mill Creek about a mile away from here. I was just a kid walking around town, needed a job, and the brewmaster told me to come in and talk to me for a few minutes, and he said the next day, bring your heavy clothes, you'll start in the cellars. There was no machinery, no automated cleaning systems, everything was by hand. We had a good crew of guys, and we had a lot of fun. My name is Phil Davidson. I am I guess a brewer now, I've, I pretty much do everything here. I've been sort of crawling around this brewery for a very long time since I was quite young. My dad is friends with the owner and he does a lot of machine work for him. So ever since I was a little kid, I've come and gone in here. And I went to college and didn't really want to do that. I really liked the notion of beer. It was uh, a lot of enthusiasm for it. So I decided to uh, quit school and, and beg for a job. And they were kind enough to give me one and I, I started uh, working in the cellars in 2007, and uh, just this last September is when I moved to the brew house. My name is Nate Gogno, and right now I'm working in the marketing department, and I also work uh, locally in our school county market as a merchandiser with our sales team. I started in 2004 and moved to school county and to go to Penn State here. I started Penn State in August, and I started Yingling in September of 2004. So I worked uh, in the gift shop for several years, and then when I graduated school, moved into that marketing position. Of course, being in college and, you know, telling your friends you're, you're working for Yingling, everybody knows what it is, you know. So quite the, quite the job. We're America's oldest brewery. It was founded in 1829 by my great-great-great-grandfather. Uh, we celebrated 180 years in 2009, and it's been family-owned and operated for over 180 years. So we're pretty proud of that. Held our course through all the Civil War, World War I, Prohibition, uh, World War II. I mean, there was a lot of reasons for breweries to shut down. And Yingling is just slow and steady. They just maintain. During Prohibition, we, we made some non-alcoholic beers. Um, when Prohibition was repealed, we revived some of those recipes and we're still brewing porters and ales like we had done back in 1829. Originally, he built his brewery uh, where the present day City Hall is. In 1831 that brewery was destroyed by fire, so they rebuilt in the location we are today. It's built into the mountain and there's a natural spring underneath, so that was the water source for the brewery. They hand dug caves underneath the building while they were building the brewery above, so that's why a lot of it was hand, not explosive. We were called the Eagle Brewery, so that's always been on our label. We've been very true to that over the years. When my great-great-great-grandfather chose this location, he changed the name to D.G. Yingling. And then when his son joined the business in the 1870s, it was changed to D.G. Yingling and Son. But we've always kept the Eagle. Until refrigeration started, they had to utilize the caves downstairs for the refrigeration. Excavated into the side of the mountain, took use of you know, having lagering cellars made out of like caves with, you know, the nice controlled temperature. So that's why we selected this site. We built into the hillside. We used to have the caves just lined with wooden barrels and that's where we would age our product. The caves were opened up in 2004 for the tours to go down and see what was down there. So right now it's just the tours, two tours daily go through it. And I think people enjoy that part of it. We have our seven basic brews that we make, but three years ago we came out with an old recipe of Bach beer. I've never made it, and uh, I'm here 31 years. They stopped making it in 1969. We resurrected an old label, so we are always very true to our heritage, and we try and use that wherever we can in marketing for us. We didn't have a definite recipe. We had bits and pieces of it. We made a couple of experimental batches. We gave it to some of the old timers around town, including my mother. They said, that's it. It was a Lenten special, so we come out with it every spring, and uh, we just sold our last drop. It doesn't last. Very good drink, very good. I was very proud of it. The guys worked hard. Uh, they did an excellent job. I can guarantee it's gonna be here every spring now. 
because yeah, that's a big hit and people look forward to it. We've introduced some, some more craft style beers. We've added a lager to our portfolio, which is now our flagship brand. Dick Yingling, our current owner, brought that product back uh, along with Ray Norbert, helped formulate it. Uh, so Yingling Lager is the mainstream. That's the majority of, uh, of what we produce and that's the beer that goes out to the markets first. The light lager beer, which is light version of that product. Black and tan, which is a mix between our porter beer and our premium. And uh, that's a unique product and uh, that's a darker beer. We have a porter beer, which is the darkest that we make. Chesterfield Ale, the highest alcohol content beer that we make. Once you have your recipe, you don't want to vary from that too much. Like our porter, our tavern style porter and our Chesterfield Ale are the two oldest recipes. Uh, I don't know where they came from. Did they come from Germany or did Mr. Yingling start them in 1829 when he started here? There are two oldest products. You look at the old signage, it's beer, ale, and porters from Yingling, and that, those recipes have been carried on since the beginning. Um, but the light lager is a nice, nice alternative to the mainstream light beers because it does have a little more color to it and a little more flavor. Lager yeast wasn't brought to America until the mid 1800s, about 1850. 52, when they had ships fast enough to cross the Atlantic Ocean to transport this new lager yeast. Up until then it was all an ale yeast. And uh, lager yeast, it lit Europe up. Uh, they couldn't wait to spread it around. It was the new thing on the market and uh, it was really a success. So we got a hold of it and uh, things were looking up from there. It's very humbling to know that you know we've kept the business alive all these years, but um, it doesn't distract me from anything that I'm doing. I still come to work every day and work hard because, you know, I want to keep this thing going for my kids. Right now, focus is here, uh, making, you know, a quality, um, widely available product. You know, in terms of uh, giving the big guys a run for their money. You know, we're the next generation of big guys, or we're hoping to get there. And. Uh, we, we make a beer that speaks to Americans, you know, or Americans that can get it, uh, but they seem to like it. It's, it's flavorful and it's certainly the tastiest beer you're getting for the kind of money you're spending on it. I think we're, we're on the winning team here with England. I enjoy being here and I think it's a, a good spot to be in. We've got many years ahead of us. 20 or 30 years ago, they'd tell you don't get in the beer business. And uh, our brewmaster Ray Norbert told young guys that. but. I'll tell you what, with, between the lager and the craft brew explosion in the 80s is what really sent the beer world on, on its head. Um, now it's a fantastic business to get in. There might have been, oh, 100 breweries 25 years ago in America. Now there's 1,100. And every day there's a new one. Uh, small craft breweries, restaurant breweries. Um, but it, it's a good business to get in. Good times are bad. People want to drink beer. If you're really interested in trying a beer that's got some history behind it, try a Yingling. They've been around for 182 years and they're still family owned. Thanks for watching The Brewery Show. Until next time. I will say that the very first day that I was ever in our brew house, the, uh, the grain outs gates failed. And I, not me personally, but I, the whole brew ran down the street, like. <laughs> so I did get to shovel it up as you know, going down Montungo Street for four blocks, and I got to shovel all the spent grain. It was. Ever since then, I've been just you know, I'm the guy with the, the the jinx. I break everything, you know. I work with a lot of old guys. Maybe someday they won't work here anymore. That reputation will leave me. I started working at 9:30 last night, and it's 10:30 uh, in the morning. So 12, 13 hours. It's a beer, 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 it's a beer. It's a beer.